Remember as a blastocyst, that outside layer is a single cell. Well, those cells, when you get to the uterus, are going to form the placenta and the umbilical cord. So the baby forms that. Mom doesn't produce the hookup mechanism, but each of us did that in our mother's uterus. Now that inner cell mass, those cells are going to start to differentiate. They're going to start changing. And some of those cells will become muscle cells and some will become nerve cells and so on. In other words, those cells are going to form the rest of you, your body. All of you will stem from those cells. And that's why they're sometimes referred to as stem cells. And these are the stem cells that the researchers are after. And we'll be talking more about those later on. But right now, let's have you continue to grow. Here's a hand and a foot after just 12 weeks after conception. Notice the detail, the veins and the arteries and the fingernails and toenails. And here's what you look like after 16 weeks. And here's 20 weeks. Again, look at the detail of the eyebrows and the eyelashes. And if you look closely, you can even see peach fuzz on those cheeks. Now, I'm sure you've all seen ultrasound pictures, those grainy pictures of your child or grandchild. And most of the time, you know, they have those little arrows there that say head or foot so that you can get an idea of what you're looking at. Well, here's a shot of a three-dimensional ultrasound, a newer technology. And you can see that we no longer need those little arrows pointing out what's what. What a wonderful view of God's gift of life yet in the womb we're able to have. And eventually, of course, you're born, a bouncing baby boy or girl. Now, as you look at these pictures unfolding before you, I want you to answer this question. When was a new life present? Were you fully human only after you were born? Well, there are some like Peter Singer of Princeton University who say that couples should have up to a month after a child is born to decide whether that child should live or die if there's some physical or mental disability that's discovered. Are you fully human only after you've implanted in your mother's uterus or only after you start looking like a baby? There are some that would hold to that view. Of course, biology and scripture tell us that we were fully human, unique, at the very moment of conception. Biology affirms that. Here are some quotes from medical school textbooks used in many medical schools in this country. Human development is a continuous process that begins when an oocyte, an egg, is fertilized by a sperm. The fertilized egg is known as a zygote, which is the beginning of a new human being. Or this quote, upon the completion of conception, a new genetically distinct human organism is formed. So biology affirms that life begins at the moment of conception, and scripture also affirms that. In Psalm 51, David is lamenting his sin of adultery and, and murder. He acknowledges what a sinful person he is. But there's kind of a progression in the psalm. He not only is a sinful person, he acknowledges here in verse 5 that he was sinful from the time he was born. Indeed, it's even worse than that. He says he was sinful from the time that his mother conceived him. Now, if we are sinful from the moment of conception, we necessarily are human beings from the moment of conception. And that's also affirmed by the fact that Jesus Christ began his life conceived in the womb of Mary. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Jesus was once a zygote. Jesus was once a blastocyst and an embryo and a fetus. Jesus had to pass through all the stages of our development to redeem us from our unclean conception and birth. Therefore, it's clear 
both from biology and from scripture, that human life begins at the moment of conception. Now we're ready to start talking about embryonic stem cell research. And let's review once again God's procreative process. Sperm fertilizes the egg. A new life begins, a zygote. Development continues and you become that blastocyst. And here you can see that single cell layer on the outside and that inner cell mass. Then when you get to the uterus, you implant and growth begins. Now let's look at embryonic stem cell research. Embryonic stem cell research, as we've said, is concerned with that inner cell mass, those stem cells in the blastocyst. Those cells need to be removed and placed into a, a Petri dish. And there they can be cultured, they can self-replicate, and a stem cell line can be established. Now, here's a quiz for you, class. If we do this process, will we ever get to this? And the answer, of course, is no. That's why we must be opposed to embryonic stem cell research, because it necessarily involves the death of a little boy or a little girl at the blastocyst stage. Now, what's the big deal about these stem cells? Why do researchers want them? Well, embryonic stem cells do hold a lot of promise. Remember, these cells haven't decided what they're going to become yet. So theoretically, they can become any kind of tissue. They could become bone marrow tissue or nerve tissue or pancreatic tissue. If we can coax them to do that, then we can provide cures for things like leukemia or MS or diabetes. There is real promise using embryonic stem cells. However, as we've said, we have to destroy a human being to get them. Are there other sources of stem cells that we could use ethically as Christians? And the answer to that question is yes. And in order to help you understand that, let's look at this chart. Remember those early cells that each one of them has the potential to become a total human being? Those cells are referred to as totipotent. And that's a big word, but it's easy to remember. Each cell has the potential to become a total human being. Now, as growth continues and those cells mature, they're referred to as pluripotent. These are the stem cells that the researchers want because these cells have the potential to become plural, that is, many other cell types. Indeed, virtually every other cell type in the body. And as these cells mature yet more, they're referred to as multipotent. Multi, more than one. In other words, they can become other cells, but not other cell types. For example, bone marrow stem cells, it was thought for a long time, could only produce those things that the bone marrow produces, like our blood cells.